What's up guys, Chicks there from Chicks Tech Reviews. So this is the B-Link GTR mini PC. And recently, all I've seen B-Link doing is creating beasts. Well, this is B-Link's latest monster mini PC. It is probably one of the most incredible mini PCs I've come across this year. Now, quick look at what you get inside the box before we go through the specs. So you get your user manual, a small 16 GB flash drive, which says OS disk on it. So no idea what that's for, we will find out shortly. We got a mount bracket made from metal, and this will allow you to mount the mini PC on the back of your TV or monitor. We've got a bag of screws. We've got two different sizes. So some of the screws are gonna be for the bracket, and some of them are probably spare screws for your SATA drive, which is already installed. You're getting a small HDMI cable and also a long HDMI cable, a 19 volt, three amp power supply. And last but not least, the little monster itself. Here it is, people, the B-Link GT-R. Now this is powered by the AMD Ryzen 3550H CPU with Vega 8 graphics. And I have picked up the top spec that's currently available. So this has a whopping 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM and two internal drives already installed for me. So I have a 512 gig M.2 SSD drive and also an additional one terabyte two and a half inch SATA drive. So two drives already installed for my convenience and I still have another spare M.2 SATA 3 slot to play around with. So you can also pick this up in bare bones so it won't have any RAM or internal storage drives and you can add your own drives and RAM accordingly. Furthermore, there is built-in Wi-Fi 6 AX with Bluetooth version 5.1. This supports USB 3 and comes pre-installed with Windows 10 Pro fully licensed and ready to use. Now, if you go for the bare bones model, you won't get any Windows at all and you would have to license and install your own Windows. Now you're also getting dual gigabit LANs, dual internal cooling fans, dual HDMI 2.0 outputs, along with a display port and also a Type-C output, which means you can output to four displays at the same time. So amazing specification. Build quality is quite nice. It's made completely from metal with an aluminum trim going all the way around. B-Link logo in the center, the AMD Ryzen graphics on the top. Now here's something very unique. You've got a fingerprint sensor built in. Now I've always said I love mini PCs that have some ports on the front for convenience. Well, you've got a power button, a clear CMOS button, two USB 3 ports, headphone jack, and a USB Type-C port, and that is USB 3.1. Now there are two microphones, one on each side, so you've got dual microphones built into the unit. Now if we keep going, you've got some ventilation, which say GR5, and you can see the tip at the top, it says, please do not cover the cooling air inlet. And on the back of the unit, on the top, you can see more vents, power socket, two gigabit LANs. We've got an HDMI 2.0, HDMI 2.0, and a display port. And you also have four additional USB 3 ports on the back. Now on the side, we've got more vents, and that brings us back to the front. So I'm already loving the fact that you've got six USB 3 ports altogether, two on the front and four on the back. Now this is what the bottom of the unit looks like. And you've got some tips over here. Quick setting button description. Press delete to enter BIOS setup. Press F7 to enter boot options menu, which means you're gonna have full access to the BIOS and you will have full access um, to the boot setup so you can install Linux or any other OS that you wanna install. Um, and yes, Windows is installed on the SSD drive, which means we're gonna have a faster boot up time. So I can't wait to see how it performs. Now this mini PC is upgradable. You can upgrade the RAM and add multiple internal storage drives. So let's get this open and check out the internals. We have four screws to open first of all. So let's do this. Okay, so four screws are open. Let's lift off this back lid. Very nice. And here you can see the one terabyte, two and a half inch SATA drive pre-installed. So it's a Western digital. So we're gonna remove one, two, three, and four. So four more black screws. So you can see the whole plate 
with the hard drive lifts off and there is a connector underneath which I'm not going to disconnect at the moment because I just want to show you what's here. So here is the DDR4 RAM. Zoom right in to make it easier for you. SO DIMM DDR4 2 2400 megahertz 1.2 volts. It's all there for you. That is the RAM that's needed. There's two sticks in there. So eight gigs times two is already installed for myself. So this system has two M2 slots. Now one of them I've already installed with a 512 gig drive and you still have a spare M2 slot to play with. So as you saw, very easy to upgrade the RAM. You're opening four outer screws, then you're opening four black screws and they're all labeled. I'm not sure what the maximum capacity is for the drives and also the memory. Um, if I can find out, I will pop it on the screen for your convenience. Underneath this board, you will find two silent fans. So we've got two physical fans to keep the system running cool and your processor and everything's gonna be underneath. And also you have three heat conductive copper tubes. So the system is designed to run nice and cool and put everything back together. Okay, so four screws, first of all. I wanted to save myself time, so I didn't go for bare bones. I just went straight for a one terabyte SATA and 512 gig SSD pre-installed. So Windows is already on here as well. And I've got Windows 10 Pro. Further ado, I'm gonna get this all set up and we are gonna run it through my usual tests. And we're gonna find out exactly how good this mini PC really is. I'll be right back. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and this mini PC took 11 seconds to load up to the login screen. Now the fingerprint sensor is very fast and it instantly logs you in to the desktop. And here is your Windows 10 Pro desktop. So first of all, let's have a look at the system properties. So as you can see, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 3550H. It is a quad core CPU with 16 gigs of RAM and you can see that 14 gigs are usable. It's a 64-bit operating system and Windows does come activated and ready for you to use. So quick look at the system storage info. So the C drive is the SSD drive. You can see 476 gigs usable. And from that we have 442 gigs free to use. And the one terabyte SATA drive has been split into two partitions. So you can see a D drive and E drive, both giving you just over 400 gigs of free space. So the D drive is totally empty, there's nothing there. And the E drive contains two RAW files. One is the Windows 10 Pro image file and the other one are for your drivers. And speaking of drivers, if we just head over to Computer Management and Device Manager, you will see that all drivers have been installed with no question marks in this section. So this is the full version of Windows 10 Pro, comes with all the usual Windows apps you would expect, including the Windows App Store, so you can download all your favorite apps and games. And you will notice how quickly everything opens and loads. So the AMD Ryzen makes this system absolutely fly. Now this is basically a full PC experience in a compact size. The system is powerful enough to run all your regular Windows applications and play quite a few games from the Windows Store, including Modern Combat 5 and Asphalt 9 Legends. And not only that, you can play a lot more games with this system and we'll be testing out the games a little bit later in the video. So this system supports 4K. So let's go ahead and play some 4K video samples from a USB drive and we will see how it performs. So 4K at 60 frames per second played buttery smooth. So let's put it to the test. Let's play some high bitrate 4K, 160 megabits per second. Again, you can see buttery smooth 4K playback. So let's see how it handles 400 megabits per second high bitrate. So it looks like we do have super smooth 4K playback from USB. So now it's time to see how this mini PC handles 4K streaming on YouTube. Just didn't get to yours yet. Face. As I understand it, we're trying to prevent World War Three. The dimensions are weakening considerably. 
So next up we are checking out Netflix and I was able to stream a maximum of 1080p on Netflix but maybe with a better Wi-Fi connection you should be able to get Netflix 4K. Every time, death delivered in as little as half an hour. So now we are going to test the multitasking capabilities of this mini PC. So I will briefly open lots of applications and games at the same time and we'll see how this system copes. And as you can see I have lots of stuff open in the background. You can hear it all playing at the same time and the system is handling it very very well. I don't feel any lag at all and I have two big games open at the same time. So yes we have quite a powerful mini PC here, great for multitasking and nothing I have done so far has slowed it down. So great multitasking capabilities, but what about gaming? So let's begin with Asphalt 9, which I did download from the Microsoft App Store. So you can see we are all set on the highest graphical settings. So let's see how it plays. Now the next thing I want to test is to see how this system handles game streaming. So let's begin with PlayStation Now. Liu Kang. Show me what you can do. So moving on to some Google Stadia.
Let's go. Now here are the results for the Wi-Fi speed test. 53 megabits per second download and 17 megabits per second upload. So this is currently the top broadband speed I achieve. Now when the fans are running at full speed, you can expect around 46 to 47 decibels of fan noise. And in Cinebench we achieved 1566 points. And you can see in the ranking that the AMD Ryzen 5 performs slightly better than the Intel Core i7 4850HQ. So that should give you a rough idea of how powerful the AMD Ryzen 5 is. Now Anti2 Benchmark is no longer available on Windows, so instead we are looking at CPU benchmark scores by Passmark Software, and as you can see we have a score of 8165. So let's see how this compares to the other mini PCs of this year. So as you can see, the new B-Link GTR has taken the top number one position on this chart with a Passmark Benchmark score of 8165, making this the most powerful mini PC we have seen on the channel so far. So there you have it guys, that was the new B-Link GTR Mini Windows 10 PC. So here are my thoughts on this device. The build quality and specs are pretty decent and so is the performance. It supports high bitrate 4K from USB and plays 4K Blu-ray rips with no buffering issues at all. Supports 4K online streaming with YouTube, Amazon Prime Video and many others. Netflix however was supported at 1080p but with a better internet connection you may be able to achieve 4K. Now the AMD Ryzen is pretty powerful, it's nearly three times faster than any Celeron mini PC that we are used to seeing. Now the power can be felt even when undertaking basic tasks like general web browsing, opening and closing apps, word processing, etc. Now let's talk about gaming. Now gaming is surprisingly better than I expected even with the shared Vega 8 graphics. It performed quite decently. Now you can play older PC games like Counter-Strike Go on high graphics and achieve around 40 to 50 frames per second. However, the new and more demanding AAA titles played but I wouldn't call it smooth. You can't expect more than 14 to 20 frames per second. Now there are a few other gaming options which are better than Steam for this system. And yes, I'm talking about game streaming with options like Google Stadia and PlayStation Now. So you can still play the latest AAA titles like Red Dead Redemption 2. And you do have the Microsoft App Store. And there is also a wide selection of mobile games from the Microsoft App Store and you do have the option to download the mobile games from Microsoft App Store and game emulators also work absolutely fine. I tested Dreamcast, uh, PlayStation Portable and PlayStation 1 games and N64 and they all play smooth with no issues. So quite a capable system for gaming especially considering that you only have shared graphics so it does a decent job for basic gaming. Now another plus point is the upgrading options. Now when it comes to internal storage, you do have two M.2 slots and one SATA slot. You can buy this mini PC bare bones, so no RAM, no storage and no Windows 10 and it will cost around 399 However, if you want the top spec, same as mine, with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, 512 M.2 SSD and 1TB SATA with Windows 10 Pro pre-installed and licensed, then that will cost you 629 and there are a few other options in between, but don't forget you are getting dual gigabit LANs, Wi-Fi 6, 6 USB 3 ports and quad display outputs. Bottom line, for the price, this is quite a decent performing mini PC, especially as you're getting lots of upgrading options. This is an ideal mini PC for watching and streaming your movies and videos online, general office tasks, typing, browsing the web, emails, and some light gaming and it will handle some basic gaming and video editing with no issues. So do let me know your thoughts in the comments and with that being said I will leave the links in the description in case you guys want to check this product out for yourself. Meanwhile thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have an amazing day. I'll see you guys in the next one.